So macOS Ventura actually ended up coming out for a few different models of MacBooks. Now I did go ahead and install it on the oldest supported MacBook Pro, which is actually very interesting because it is kind of from the last generation of software macOS Monterey to this one, they actually dropped support of two different MacBooks, one the 2015 MacBook Pro, but also the 2016 MacBook Pro as well, which is actually kind of interesting because that one was a really big redesign if you all remember. However, that MacBook caused a lot of issues for Apple. They had a massive keyboard issue with that specific model. And also this was the first one to bring USB type C to all the MacBooks and pretty much got rid of all the ports. Since then, Apple has reverted this design, but it's also very interesting that they dropped support of that MacBook as well. Now the oldest supported MacBook Pro as of right now for macOS Ventura is actually the 2017 model. So I will say going from the 2016 to the 2017 one, there were a few improvements. You know, they kind of fixed a little bit of the internals. They made it a little bit faster, but I will say it is more in tune with a 2016 MacBook than it is with a 2018 MacBook in my opinion. I feel like the 2018 ones were a little bit faster than that, but in reality, I feel like there's no reason why the 2016 MacBook Pro could not have been supported in the software version. Now this update size was fairly large. It definitely wasn't a small size update. And honestly, no matter what I say in this video, I would highly recommend not installing this version of software on your MacBook. It would make absolutely no sense. It would cause too many issues. And I personally believe that sticking with the latest version of macOS Monterey, or even if you're on macOS Big Sur or whatever, that would make a lot more sense than going to some software version like this. Now, features wise, there's a lot of different features that are involved with this macOS version. However, unlike most other versions of macOS Apple has made, they made a lot of conscious decisions to actually not give the older supported MacBooks, especially the ones with the Intel chipsets, a majority of these awesome features. Now, this is actually very sad because as somebody who owns an Intel Mac and Intel iMac and all these other MacBooks, I want to see a lot of these features come to something like these 2017 MacBook Pros. Unfortunately, Apple didn't give a lot of these big features to them. Now, fortunately for us, some features did get ported over, which is nice. One, we did get a new search design, which is cool. So if you're searching for things, it's a little bit, you're supposed to be with Spotlight Search, it's supposed to be a little bit smarter, give us images and things we can search for now too, which is really good. So far, you actually got a bit of a speed improvement as well, which is really interesting. That's kind of like a meme within the betas, but I guess that's actually true here. They also went ahead and enhanced iMessage. So just like with iOS 16, we have the ability of unsending iMessages, unreading iMessages, and even editing sent iMessages as well. So that is really, really crazy. And we do have that capability here with this 2017 MacBook Pro 2, which is actually really cool. And on top of that, we do have SharePlay within iMessages. So if you ever wanted to utilize SharePlay and those features within there, you can utilize that within iMessage, which I actually think is really cool. Now, another big change that came with this software version, which is supported with this version, is actually Stage Manager. Now, this will actually allow you to go ahead and somewhat allow you to organize your applications and windows in a single view on the Mac. So you can go ahead and stay focused. This is what they're stating. I'm just reading from it. So you can stay focused on whatever you're doing without having to go ahead and, you know, switch between apps and tasks and, you know, waste too much time doing it. It's a little bit easier to see, I think. I still think it's kind of cool and I'm at least glad that this type of Mac actually ended up getting that feature. So I think that's cool too. Now you also have the ability of within this creating your workspaces, switching between apps. It's just like creating multiple windows, but I think this way it's a little bit easier to kind of maneuver with. So I think it's cool. FaceTime got some updates, especially when it comes down to the continuity camera, which actually allows us to use our iPhones as a webcam for our Macs, which is very interesting. I think it's an interesting approach. I would be curious to see how it works in real life. That's another really cool thing we have within this version. And ultimately, those are pretty much the main things. There's been some, you know, performance improvements here and there too, but I think that's specifically for the M1 Max. There's been a few other improvements here and there, but ultimately, like I mentioned, it's really not going to be a version of software you want to install just yet. There's still going to be lots of issues. There's going to be lots of problems. So you're going to be in a much better position if you stick with the latest version of macOS, you know, with macOS Monterey, rather than going for something like this, in my opinion. So that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love it. Every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.